Whether you love or hate Fortnite, no one can deny that Fortnite is the most influential game of the century right now. Epic Games managed to take a failing game and turn it into one that changed the industry too many times to count. They popularized the free to play model, made crossplay a thing and popularized it, popularized the battle pass, the idea of a live service, and even mainstream collaborations. Of course, Epic Games gets all the credit, but what's often overlooked and receives little to no credit are the people on the development teams that make all of this come to life. So Epic rewards them and makes sure that they don't get burnt out by taking two breaks every year. One during the summer and one during the winter. Now, of course, these breaks didn't just come out of the goodness of Epic's heart, as there were many events that led up to it. So let's look at how the break started and some other things that the dev team has to face. When Fortnite released in 2017, Epic Games was no small company. They already had made many hit games in the past like Gears of War, Infinity Blade, and Robo Recall. They worked with companies like Apple, Microsoft, EA, and Disney to create games and license out the Unreal Engine that they own. Unreal Engine was first released in 1998 and had many developments over the years. Originally meant for first-person shooter games, it involved and wanted different genres like third-person shooters and even into the film and television industry, with series like The Mandalorian using it to produce. Unreal Engine is a leader in 3D computing graphics and in 2014 was named the most successful video game engine by the Guinness World Records. All of this leads us back to Fortnite. Now we can see that Epic Games wasn't an indie development company, and when Fortnite came out, they were big. We don't have 2017 statistics, but in 2018, Epic Games had over 1,000 employees. Split across Unreal Engine, ongoing games that Epic Store supports, and other companies that they own, you can kind of see how we might be running into a problem with having enough developers for Fortnite. Fortnite ran updates every single week, introduced new items and mechanics, fixed bugs quicker than most other games in the market did at that time, and continued to innovate. This went on for years, until in 2019, when everything came crashing down on the company. In 2019, Polygon published an article titled, How Fortnite's Success Led to Months of Intense Crunch at Epic Games and Exposed the Working Conditions There. Interviewing a dozen anonymous employees, both former and current, they exposed the dark sides with working for Epic Games. Employees worked regularly over 70 hour work weeks and some even reported 100 hours. Epic's quality assurance and customer service department acknowledged the stressful and hostile work environment and said that while it's voluntary, it kind of was expected by the company. The staff were paid for the overtime, but working 70 to 100 hours would take a toll on their mental and physical health. Some developments worked out of fear in which they knew that they were expected to work these long hours, and just to make it worse, these workers were forced to sign an NDA, or a non-disclosure agreement, that limits the ability to talk about the company's work culture. One employee commented about the working conditions, stating that there's probably at least 50 or 100 other people at Epic working these hours. I know people who pull 100 hour work weeks. The company gives us a limited time off, but it's almost impossible to take that time. If I take that time off, the workload falls on other people, and no one wants to be that guy. The biggest problem is that we're patching all the time. The executives are focused on keeping Fortnite popular for as long as possible, especially with all the new competition that's coming in. So basically what they're saying is that 1. Epic Games needs more staff and 2. All of these bug fixes that are typically resolved in days is what's mainly causing this crunch time. Now the Epic Games representative actually acknowledged the 100 hour work weeks and stated that seek to immediately remedy them to avoid recurrence. Basically what they're saying is that once it happens they do their best to make sure that it doesn't happen again. But this is the gaming industry. You can't control when bugs happen, and as a matter of fact, they always will happen. I'm sure Epic Games did try their best, but the more content that you add to the game, the more bugs that will appear, and the cycle will just repeat. The representative also stated that the sudden success of Battle Royale created difficulties, and that Fortnite achieved a far higher level of success than we have ever anticipated. The Fortnite team rapidly expanded the game to grow the audience. The Unreal Engine team began a broad effort to optimize for 60 FPS and support 7 platforms. Others throughout the company moved to Fortnite to maintain momentum. While workers were moving to Fortnite department, it didn't really help. There were still not enough people to work and workers often cited that not doing the overtime made you look bad or that if you didn't do the overtime, you would be replaced. There was a lot in the article that I didn't even cover and that was maybe half the article. 
there's a lot of other things including worse accusations against Epic Games, but do just note that all of this is hearsay and some of the information is more than likely exaggerated. I'll leave the link to the article in the description below if you're interested in reading it. So what did Epic Games do? Well, we don't have an official statement from Epic Games regarding their response to Workers Crunch, but we can kind of get an idea based off what happened to Fortnite. All of these allegations happened in Chapter 1 Season X, and what happened after Season X? Chapter 2 Season 1. One of the most hated seasons in Chapter 2. Nothing really happened and there was pretty much no update throughout the season, as well as the fact that Chapter 2 Season 2 got delayed twice. We lost patch notes until Chapter 2 Season 2, but even that was only sent out to a limited number of creators, and it resulted in the two longest seasons in Fortnite history, Chapter 2 Season 1 and Chapter 2 Season 2. Players were complaining about the lack of content and Epic Games was going crazy with hiring, as by 2020, they had over 3,200 employees. Starting in that year, 2019, Epic started taking a one-week summer and winter break. And in 2020, they invoked a policy that devs will get every other Friday off, a policy which Epic ended up ending in 2021. That's where we stand at today, and from the looks of it, Epic kind of figured out how to give us constant money updates without crunching their workers. Unfortunately, bugs aren't fixed as fast as they used to, but I don't really think that's an issue and we should be complaining about it too much as that's what caused crunch time to begin with. The main thing is that Epic Games are still actively working to fix the issue and over time, even though it takes months, it does get fixed. Oh, and I'm also gonna just mention that in 2023, Epic laid off 16% of their workforce, but they stated that two-thirds of them were outside the critical core development positions. I'm not gonna really comment on it since it's still so recent and there's no way for us to tell if it had an impact on the development of Fortnite. So what do you think? Did Epic Games actually fix the crunch time issue? Or is it still ongoing and it just hasn't been exposed for five years? That was a story as to why Fortnite takes a break twice a year. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button, and I hope to see you next time. Shoots. Oh, hell no. I'm late this scoop yet. <laughs> Little bait. Oh, hell no. I cracked oh. one, cracked one. Nice Are they both set. done? I'm cracked at Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> if you die to this dinosaur. No! Die to this dinosaur. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs>